Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Angular version 20 recently got released and I'm now going to talk about the topic that you have requested a lot which is server side rendering, hydration and Angular. And I really really love incremental hydration in Angular and we're gonna get to that in a point. This is gonna be a multi-part series and we are going to first start looking into what is server side rendering and basically starting with a fresh Angular application enabled SSR. So let's talk about what is SSR in general. When we talk about server side rendering it essentially means that we are generating the HTML, the whole rendered HTML on the server side on demand. So this is important. The on demand is the keyword here, which means that whenever the user goes to a particular route, which is server side rendered, that means that every time the user goes there, it's going to go to the server. The server is going to generate the HTML and then return back the rendered HTML from server. Now this will add some load to the server because every user requesting the same route would essentially be a whole rendering process on the server. Server. So when we go towards server side rendering, usually we go on the things which are dynamic. For example, you need to get some data from the database, then render it on the server and then send back to the client itself. One of the biggest benefits for this is that it essentially immediately displays the rendered content on the UI, which avoids any flicker, which also can eliminate us showing a loader or a blank screen for a while before an actual content gets rendered. So everything renders on the server and then comes on the browser as rendered HTML. Now some questions would be why do we go with SSR and this is a huge debate and again there's no perfect answer for this. It would be on a case by case basis and there would always be trade-offs. But some of the good things about SSR is that you have a faster first paint which means that when the user goes to your page they see a meaningful content sooner since the HTML comes fully arrived. So there's no client-side JavaScript that essentially runs to show the meaningful content per se. Another huge benefit with SSR is the SEO and social previews because everything is rendered on server when the search engines or crawlers essentially go to a particular page it's already rendered so they can enable search engine optimization people would be able to find your content easily because you have the rendered content coming from the server which could include headings articles all the SEO related things that you would want the crawlers to find and if you compare this with just client-side rendering which just essentially receives a shell instead of the whole rendered content this is much better obviously for seo and another amazing thing is that when we have server-side rendering we have something called predictable data fetching which means that when your server is trying to make a request it can immediately make the request to the relevant sources for example api calls or database requests and essentially avoids any client-side waterfall of requests which may be not really predictable but on the server side it can be controlled much better so here is a usual flow when it comes to server-side rendering the user tries to go to the browser and basically tries to go to a particular page. The request goes to the server. The server sends back the pre-rendered HTML to the browser itself. The browser displays the HTML using the document object module and then it loads the JavaScript, parses it and then basically runs it attaching any relevant listeners or interactivity. Now let's talk about client side rendering versus server side rendering and this video will not just be theory so we are going to code in just a bit but bear with me. When we talk about client side rendering usually what happens is that the server only sends back a minimal amount of HTML which just contains the bare bones or a shell plus the JavaScript bundle. The JavaScript bundle then looks at that shell and analyzes okay this is an angular application what do I need to do and then it runs the whole compiler and essentially generates the components on the client side after the HTML is received in the browser and that's when it essentially starts creating those components or rendering that particular HTML and where client side rendering essentially excels is the subsequent navigation so once you have loaded a particular page and you want to go to another route it's much easier with client-side rendering because you can prefetch the further routes you can plan your user's journey as a developer or as the product owners and that makes it really smooth for the users to go from one page to another without having to go to a server-side rendered page like the legacy multi-page applications or what we used to call them the regular applications now let's finally look at the timeline on how this looks like whenever the browser sends a request in the case of SSR the server side rendering would render the HTML on the server itself then it sends it to the browser the browser parses the HTML and then the client side rendering kicks in place now this process would differ if we are using hydration or not but we are gonna get to that in just a bit for now let's quickly create a new application and look at the difference between these different modes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go to my projects folder and here I would have to use the latest angular version 
version or the angular cli version so make sure you run npm install dash g at angular slash cli at latest which will install the latest angular cli in your global npm sort of workspace and then what you'll do is you'll just run ng dash dash version to see what is the version of angular you're using and here you can see i'm using 20.0.2 so here now i can run ng new and i can use the dash dash ssr to enable ssr by default so just by running this command it asks me what should i name the application i'm actually going to name it ng v20 demo app and we're going to use this project for further exploration as well for example we are going to look into the defer blog hydration and whatnot so let's quickly hit enter here now we are going to say no for the zone less at the moment let's go with a regular application now for the styles i'm just going to use css and here we go we are having our application created with ssr enabled by default one of the things that you can see here is that we have this main server.ts file we have server.ts we also have the routes file here as well so app route server.ts as well so all these server files are included for us to start working with angular with ssr enabled now that we have the project created let's quickly open that into our editor so i'm going to quickly open this ng v20 demo app into vs code and now we can take it from there the first thing that i want you to look into is the angular.json we're not going to go too deep into it but i'm just going to focus on the important parts here so if you see here we should have this build option here and then we have serve here as well if you look at the build itself if you go inside here you're going to see that we do mention this ssr here and the entry is source server.ts this is where the server side rendering essentially starts so to say so if i go to src here and i go to server.ts you will see a bunch of things here first of all you're going to see that we are using express here or by default the angular app that has ssr enabled uses the express application right here and then also uses this package called angular ssr slash node and the key factor that is being used here is this angular node app engine this is essentially which creates our angular application and then it connects with the express app later on if i scroll down you're going to see that we are using this browser disk folder we're going to get to that in just a bit but if i scroll down here you can see that we use this app dot use and we use this angular app right here so we are essentially saying that our express server is going to use our angular application and this is a summary of it all now if you look into the packages on here you're going to see something here as well we do have this serve ssr ngv20 demo app which essentially should run this file but before that we need to build it so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go and open terminal and we're going to run ng build from here and while this is building i want to go back again to the source server ts to show you something you'll see that here we say that the express application uses the browser dist folder and this is where it gets its html from so if i go to the disk folder since our build is complete here you're going to see that we end up with two different folders we have browser and we have server when we go with server side rendering essentially we are talking about running this server mjs which essentially contains the transpiled version of it but essentially if you look here in the browser you're going to find the actual html files and the javascript files and the css files this is our browser bundle if you just wanted to have the client side rendering you would just go ahead with this index html and you're going to see here that it contains a bunch of things here but we are going to explore in a bit the main thing to look at here is this thing called the app root component and it contains a bunch of things here but we're going to get to that in just a bit now that we have this done the build created i'm going to go to the package json and copy this particular command so i'm quickly going to copy this now let's paste this right here and i'm going to run it using npm run and then the command itself here now you can see here that it says node express server listening on localhost 4000 so we go to our browser we go to localhost 4000 and if i hit enter you can see that this is the application that we have right now and this is server side rendering enabled now i want to go back to the source code and show you something specific if i go to the application right here and if i go here to the app routes server ts this is where we define how the server side rendering or our strategy for rendering on server works by default you see that we say here that the render mode is going to be pre-rendered now this has a bunch of options we can use just the client here we can either use server which enables the server side rendering or we can use what was there by default which is pre-render when we talk about pre-rendering this means that this will render the whole application when we are doing the build which means that when we run ng build that is when it would render the whole page but when the user comes to the particular page it will not render at that moment so it's not going to render it on request time from the server it's going to render it on the build time which which just means that it's going to be static html and it only happens once when you're about to release to production but it won't happen on every user's request 
Great, so I'm gonna actually change this to server for now. And what I'll also do is I'm gonna save this file and I'm gonna go into the app TS here. And here we have this app right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say this implements on init. And then I'll also go ahead and do one more thing. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and say ng on init. And here I'm gonna go ahead to add a console log here. And I'm gonna say app initialized here. So let's quickly save this. And I'm going to also import this from here. So now I'm saving this file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rather run ng serve so i'm gonna say ng serve from here now when you run ng serve this will run this with the server itself so it's not just running the client side bundle but it's also running it from the server side as well here you can see that we have a bunch of bundles we have the browser bundles being generated when you run ng serve we also have the server bundles generated as well which contains the server mjs main server mjs and whatnot so essentially if you go to localhost 4200 this will do the same thing as what we did before but in dev mode so to say so now if I go to localhost 4200, let's see what happens. In this particular case, you're going to see that everything looks normal. It is still shows the application itself. But what I wanted to show you is I went to the server TS and changed this to server. You're going to see that now we start seeing some console logs here. This says app initialized, right? If I hit a bunch of enter here and then if I go back and refresh one more time, you're going to see that we get another log, which means that whenever the user goes to our application, this thing renders on the server and then goes to the client. Now, if I go back to my browser and if I go and inspect this and here you're going to see that in the console as well, we see a similar log. We see app initialized. So if I refresh this again, this would happen on the server and on the client as well. So here you can see on the client side, this happened. And here you can see that on the server, it also happened once more. Now, if I change this to client only, let's see what happens. So if I go to the browser now, I'm going to refresh now and you can see that we still get this log here. But now on the server side, you don't see any log at all because when I save the file, I got these logs like this guy got updated but I don't see any logs on the server at the moment because now we have said that all our paths or all the routes in our application are client side render only so no server side rendering now I want to show you how to actually see if something is client side rendered or server side rendered in the case of client side rendered I would not suggest you to look into the elements tab and see what is being rendered for example if I look into this app root you're going to see that we have this main element and then this div but this was rendered on the client side this doesn't come from the server how you check it is you right click here and you click this thing called view page source when you click this you're gonna see this particular source and if you look at this you can see clearly that from the server what comes back is just this bare bone html that contains this app root alongside the css file the javascript file that is called main.js here and then also polyphase.js etc etc what's important here is that once the browser receives this particular file then it runs the angular compiler and essentially goes through all the components so it looks into what is this app root or what is this really and from our code base we know that this app root is right here defined as the app component itself so it looks at the app component it renders the template of the app component which is inside the app html right here as you can see this whole thing and then it also applies any css that is attached with the component itself and then it goes from there if the app component uses more components then it essentially builds that whole tree and renders everything but what's important is that all of that happens on the client side after the browser has received that information if you go back to our slide that's what we are talking about there's no ssr in this case which means that when the browser requests it just sends a bare bone html and then the client side rendering takes over and then does the heavy lifting and renders the angular components now when we change this to server side rendering let's see what happens so i'm going to change this to server refresh now and you can see already that we got this app initialized log on the server which means that this is server side rendering but if i go to my browser what changes then i I see exactly the same thing but if i go and refresh this thing here you're gonna see that now we get a lot more we get all of these things from the server and you can see down here as well that the body contains the app root and the app root contains something well actually if i go up top here and click this line wrap this would make it much easier for us to see what's really happening here now you can see that the app root here contains all these attributes contains the main element right here contains a div inside contains a bunch of svg and then contains all these elements as well that says hello ngv20 demo congratulations your app is running what we see right here so all of this is actually coming from the server side and you can imagine it like this the more users go to your application the more times you will see this running on the server and then the html comes to the client and then takes it from there now i'm going to show you what happens if we change this to pre-render which was by default when we select pre-render and save you're going to see that we still see app initialized 
once, right? Now, if I go to the browser and if I refresh now, you can see app initialize here. If I do it three more times, one, two, and three, you may think that like the server side rendering, we would get more logs on the server. And if I go back to my code here, you can still see that that is the case, but that is not the reality. In this particular case, since we are running dev mode, that's why it's happening. So if I change this, let's say I go ahead and run ng build. And then if I run npm run and then the command itself, now I can go to localhost 4000 here and you can see that we see app initialized here. If I go to my server here, you can see that this no longer shows that particular log. And this is me running the built application. But you know what's interesting? If I go a bit up when I ran the ng build, you're going to notice something interesting here. You can see that app initialized logged here and that is when we run ng build. So when we run ng build, it essentially went through the components, built and rendered the HTML on the build time. It doesn't do it now on the request time when the user tries to go to the page. So you, we don't really see any logs. And I'm going to quickly show you the alternate with the build process with SSR. So let's quickly go back and we're going to change this to server. We're going to save this now and we are going to run the build and the serve command now. So we can quickly say npm run build and npm run serve. Now you're going to see that when we are building the project, we will not see those logs. So if I go up here, you can see that with SSR or with server side rendering, when we build, we don't see the app initialized log here because it's not doing pre-render. So the logs during the build process are not there. But now that we are running our server, if I go to my browser and refresh now, you can see that we see the log here. So every time the user goes and refreshes, you're going to see the logs coming there, as you can see right here. Now, I hope that just playing around like this and showing you this actually makes it clear for you the differences between these three particular modes. And just before wrapping it up, I'm going to actually switch back to pre-render and then run the same command as before to build it and then serve it, which was this particular command. So I can show you one last thing. If I refresh this, obviously this is running on the client side as well. But if I go and go to the view page source, I wanted to show you that we get the whole pre-rendered HTML in the case of server side rendering and also pre-render as well. So here you can see that all the content like hello and GV20, if I try to find it right here, you can see it right here and you can see the whole rendered HTML in this particular case as well. Now, before we wrap up, the question is which one do you use and in which case? I would say when you are short of resources, for example, you can't really afford heavy servers and you have millions and millions of users and you don't really want your pages or your routes to render on the server on each request, you will not use SSR in this case. You may just want to just go with client side rendering and you're fine with having, for example, a bare bone shown on the client side and then you show a loader and then get the data on the client side. So you put less effort on the server resources. In that particular case, client side is better. When you really have a dynamic data and you want to run it for sure on the server and you want better SEO, you have the resources. I think that's where you would want to go with SSR. And I think that's going to be the case for most of the applications today because it helps with the SEO. It helps with the user experience as well. It's better user experience because it essentially improves the first contentful paint, the largest contentful paint and whatnot. And it also helps reduce the cumulative layout shift or CLS as well. And when you talk about pre-rendering, it's best for anything that's static. For example, if you talk about websites or web applications that have articles, news or your pages like contact form, you have privacy policy, terms and conditions. Those don't need to be rendered on the client side or even on the server side. You just do a pre-render on them. So they are generated on the build time. And whenever you want to update that, just, you know, push a new release. And now everybody gets the new rendered HTML out of the box and you don't have to re-render it again and again. Well, I hope that this clears the confusion between client side rendering, server side rendering and static side generation. And this is not just it. In the next video, we are going to talk about the defer block, which essentially is super cool and helps you improve your initial load time and reduces the bundle size that your application needs for the initial load itself. So if you're ready to take your Angular skills to the next level, make sure to watch this particular video and also look for the link for my upcoming book, Mastering Angular Signals that you should find in the description of this video. With that said, as always, happy coding. I'm going to see you next time.